Well, peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Paul began his letters that way, and, and it always touched me how he was sending peace to the readers of his epistles. But it's not peace like the world knows. It's peace that only believers receive, that inner peace through Christ. Uh, 2 Thessalonians says in 3.16, how may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way? And he says, the Lord be with you all. Now, uh, if you look at your bulletins and open up the page, I'm going to help you to stay awake during this sermon because you've got to fill in the blanks. And the ushers are going to check your books or your book. No, no, that's not true. So you fill in the blanks, and if we get this work, and it will work, if not. All right, let's, let's, we'll go along and give it a try. Um, the first slide, which we don't have up there. <laughs> it's a slide of God saying, good morning, I'm God, and I'm going to take care of all your needs for today. And you, you don't have to help me. That's easily said, but not done. We always want to help. You know, uh, our first day in kindergarten, they were driving at home. You have to work hard. You have to do. You have to do this to reach the highest level of success. But they never said, ask God to help you along the way, because they're not allowed to say that anymore. But we have to ask God, and Daryl's message said that we keep our eyes on Jesus in order to be successful. We ask Jesus for everything. Well, I, I, I'll tell you a story while we're waiting uh, about forgetting to ask Jesus or asking Jesus. Years ago, I was terrified of anything to do with medical stuff, the doctor's office, and especially growing up as a kid, if you got sick, your mother was chasing you around with an enema bag, because for some reason they said, that's going to fix you. And if it didn't fix you, then you went to the doctor and they used the needle that had like a 20 point, I mean it was huge, it was like a 16 penny nail. And so I, I became deathly afraid of that. And they'd have to hold me, literally, on the floor to give me a shot. Well, I got hurt at work, and I, I went to my primary care doctor, and he said, he checked me down there, and he said, you're gonna need surgery. I sat down, and I really got flushed, like I was gonna pass out. That's all he did, told me that I'm gonna need surgery. Well, a guy at work, had a similar surgery, and he told me a little bit about what's involved. But I wasn't satisfied with that, so I went home and I got on my knees and I said, Lord, I don't know what's gonna happen with this surgery, but I want you to handle it, and I gave it to God. I mean it, I gave it to him, that was about 30 years ago, and I said, you take this, and whatever the outcome is, I'm happy. Because I knew when I wake up from that surgery, and I will wake up from that surgery, I'm either going to be in the arms of Jesus or in the arms of my wife. I can't lose. I am so glad that I had that peace, because I had nine more surgeries after that. And I had many other procedures that we all seem to get as we age. But that first one, no, I'll never forget. They took my blood pressure and said it was 110 over 75. I said, I must be excited because it's usually like 100 over 68. And then I fell asleep. And then someone comes in and wakes me up. And he says, hi, I'm your anesthesiologist. I'm going to give you something to calm you down. I said, you do realize I was sleeping, don't you? <laughs> so that was my first encounter with surgery. And I have to say, just like that, and I know who is handling it, and I didn't take it back. I wish I could do that with all facets of my life, but I didn't. So, um, let's see, where did we leave off? We got a slide, Barbara. Yeah. Where is it? 
All right, let me ask a question. Who has something they're worried about? Good. Who has something they worried about before, you know, recently? Good, I don't have to run communion around again. I think you're being honest here. Okay, let's, let's look at it now. There are many cliches. Go back one, please. This is when you start to fill in the blanks, and I'm only gonna tell you once, then you're gonna find it yourself. These are the cliches about worry. Worry is a useless emotion. And is there any evidence that someone was successful at worrying away an event that they were concerned about? You worried about something, and did that worry make it go away? Okay, another is, worrying is like paying interest on a debt that is not yet due. You're not writing. <laughs> and then there's a quote, this quote, I really like this quote from, from an Indian Buddhist because it really sets it home. He said, go ahead, he said, if you can solve your problem, then what is the need of worrying? If you can't solve it, then what is the use of worrying? And that makes so much sense. So, but it comes down to two things, and I wish Crystal was here because she would have, she would have analyzed what I had to say about the difference between anxious and worried. So the question is, are you anxious or are you worried? Jesus used both terms in the Bible. And the translators of the Bible that made different versions also used the words interchangeably. But let's see, are they interchangeable? So let's see what the difference is. There's 10 differences between worry and anxiety. And Guy Lynch is a PhD in psychology, I guess it is, that listed these 10, and I tend to agree with him. He said, we tend to experience worry in our heads and anxiety in our bodies. And he says, worry tends to be more focused on thoughts in our heads while anxiety is more visceral. I know I didn't know that either, but our nurse probably knows what that means. It means in our nervous system. When you're anxious about something, you feel it throughout your whole body. Worry tends to be specific while anxiety is more diffuse. And I had to look up diffuse. And it said, spread over a wide area, which would go back to the one before. It affects your whole nervous system. And it says, worry is verbally focused, while anxiety <coughs> includes verbal thoughts and mental imagery. This difference is important, as emotional mental images, such as those associated with anxiety, they promote a much greater cardiovascular response than emotional verbal thoughts, such as those associated with worry. This is another reason why we experience anxiety throughout the whole body. I could share something, but this isn't the place about one time when I was really, really anxious. So, then worry often triggers problem solving, but anxiety does not. You might say, I'm worried about something, and I can do this to fix it, and then I don't have to worry about it anymore. But anxiety is tougher. It says, worry can lead us to think about solutions and strategies for dealing with a given situation. Anxiety is more like a hamster wheel that spins us around, but doesn't lead us to productive solutions. Indeed, anxiety's diffuse nature makes it less amenable to problem solving. In other words, as they would say in the uh, business world, analysis paralysis, you might have heard that. And you, what are you doing when you're anxious? You're overthinking something over and over and over. Can't sleep at night because anxiety has captured you. And then worry creates mild emotional distress. Anxiety can create severe emotional distress. Anxiety is simply much more powerful and hence disruptive and problematic psychological state than worry. I know you're thinking about me. 
what did we sign up for when we came here today? A psychology class? I'm going to get to that point, so bear with me a little bit more. Then we say worry is caused by more realistic concerns than anxiety. If you're concerned about getting fired because you did really poor on a project, you're worried. But if you're concerned about getting fired because your boss didn't ask about your child's piano recital, you're anxious. So worry tends to be controllable, anxiety much less so. So by problem solving and thinking through strategies to deal with the cause of our worry, we can diminish it greatly. We have much less control over our anxiety as it is much harder to talk ourselves out of it. Worry tends to be temporary state, but anxiety can linger. Once we resolve the issue of worrying us, our worry diminishes and disappears. Anxiety can linger, though, for long periods of time and even jump from one focus to another. One week we feel anxious about work, another about health, then about our kids, and it goes on and on and on if we let anxiety take place. Worry doesn't impact our professional and personal functioning. Anxiety does. No one takes a sick day to sit and worry about whether their teenager will do well on their exams. True? But anxiety can make us feel so restless, uncomfortable, and incapable of concentrating that we might literally feel too distressed to work. And then worry is considered a normative psychological state while anxiety is not. In certain intensities and duration, anxiety is considered a true mental disorder, one that requires psychological treatment and or meditation. I'm not saying anybody has psychological problems if you're anxious. That's us being mere mortals, and we do get anxious. And 35 years ago, the doctor put me on medication because I was anxious and hard to live with, according to my wife. <laughs> So the question is, are you a worrier or are you anxious? Then I turn to the Bible and say, let's see what, look what God said about worry and anxiety. And he gets to Philippians 4, 6, and 7. A lot of people are familiar with this. And uh, Pastor, what was his name? Chuck Swindoll. He said, paraphrasing. Worry about nothing, pray about everything, if you remember that. But here's the full text on it. Do not be anxious, there's that word anxious in here, about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in who? Christ Jesus. And in Proverbs 1225 said, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. So an encouraging word from a friend can often change your perspective on an issue if you're anxious about something. Unless you have friends like Job, then you... <laughs> All right, now we go to Matthew. This, this reading really summarizes, this is Jesus talking. And he said, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying at a single hour to your life. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all the splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown in the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Here he's talking to his disciples saying, you have little faith. They've been walking around with him for three years, but still, you have little faith. When Peter walked on the water, he turned his eyes from Jesus. And what happened? He sunk. 
It said here, okay. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And, and that, is so, that is so true. Uh, my mother was a professional warrior. I think she wrote a book and gave it to her sisters. But she, she worried about stuff, and I said, but why are you worrying? What are you gonna get out of that? And I said, have you ever had it where you didn't have a meal? And she said, well, this one time, I said, one time you didn't have a meal? No, but one time we didn't think we were gonna have a meal. I said, but God provided it? She says, yes. I said, okay, then I end my case. Don't worry, God will take care of you, go to him. So in Matthew, again, we'll repeat Matthew uh, 6, 27. Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Now there's worrying in the NIV. And if we go to the next one with the ESV, they interchange it and say, which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? It just brings me to Psalm 139, 13 through 16. And this is what David wrote. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in a secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. And here's the one that I want you to focus on. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to, to be. So God already knew how long you were gonna last, when he's gonna call you home. So worrying about death is not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Um, I get a kick out of the next one. You ever see the advertisement for these miracle pills? It said, live longer. Oh, really? I like this guy, his name's Kim, Kim Yawitz, a nutritionist said, taking supplements for longevity is like putting premium gas in a beat up car with three flat tires and a bad clutch. <laughs> but here's where he went wrong. And well, I went wrong, because I have a tendency to read from the bottom up, you know, because I like to know what the end is. But what he was saying is, to live longer, you must eat a healthy diet, exercise, don't smoke, don't drink alcohol. And I thought about that when he put it, then followed it with taking supplements is useless. I'm not saying you don't take supplements, but you take them to help you feel better. It will not extend your life, not even a little. Jesus said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat, or about your body, what you'll wear. And he says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. So what I say about when people say, are you not worried about dying? And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not worried. I mean, I prefer not to be there when it happens, but I'm not worried about dying. <laughs> Because I'm in God's perfect will. He already has this plan for each of us right here. And no matter what the circumstances, when, it, when he calls us home, we're going home. And you're not, you can hang on all you want to this earth, but you're going. So it says, um, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. We hear that all the time. We're in a spiritual warfare all the time. Our God is bigger. He fills the entire universe with his spirit. But we do have the devil in various forms going around and planting in your mind, I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough. 
all these negative thoughts. That's where negative thoughts come from. They come from Satan. And he's trying to undermine you every chance he gets. And when you start to feel anxious, you, you gotta look away from wherever that message is coming from and then turn it to Jesus. Second Timothy 1, 7. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And then we finish with John 14, 27. This is, a, John 14, 26 is where he was telling his disciples. He was preparing them because he, he knew he was gonna be leaving. But in 14, 26, he told them, but the comforter will come. What's the comforter? It's a Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The comforter will come and remind you of everything I said and he'll guide you and lead you. Just like we all have the Holy Spirit. We don't tap into it enough. We need to use this, folks. We got it here. I'm talking to myself, too. I'm not this. I'm talking inward, too. I have to remind myself all the time. So he said, peace I leave you with. My peace I give you. Do not give to you as the world gives. Because the world's peace is based on other things that there are no control over, but God's peace is from the inward. We can have peace in the middle of chaos because we know who's our savior. And we've been adopted into the God's family. Doesn't get much better than that. So he said, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Tell yourself that. Nobody has any power over you except your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen?